All right, Merdad Kansari is a former Iranian diplomat and joins me now live from London. Uh, good to have you on the program with us. How do you think Iran is likely to view those comments from Israel's prime minister? Well, I don't think these comments are anything new for Iran. They have heard these before, and these comments or comments of this nature have been repeated several times over the years. So there's nothing surprising in them. The fact is that uh, the resumed nuclear talks have not led anywhere, and uh, there is no uh, relief in terms of uh, what countries like Israel or even the Arab neighbors of Iran expect in terms of having some kind of a supervised check on Iran's nuclear program, which is what they ultimately seek. And until that situation is not resolved, obviously, these kinds of tensions continue and these kinds of threats are made from all sides. So when, when uh, Israel says it could take independent action, what is like, that likely to mean? Is that a threat of war? Well, I think what it means and what they have said explicitly before, and of course something that the Iranians, I have to say, in my view, don't take very seriously, is the fact that they will launch some sort of an airstrike against uh, Iranian nuclear facilities and in order to try to incapacitate them. But that is a tall order. And uh, of course, the Iranians, through their, uh, you might say, uh, asymmetric uh, um, strategy of deterrence, have uh, placed you know, proxies very close to Israel. And they sort of try to indicate that we are in a position of hurting you as well if you decide to do something of this nature. And this kind of to and fro has been going on for a long time. The fact is that, as the Israeli prime minister said, the best solution is not one of, uh, you might say, taking military action against one another, but of trying to reach some sort of a, uh, a diplomatic solution to get out of this deadlock. But when it comes to Israel and Iran, is diplomacy an option at all? Well, I mean, let's put it this way, it should be, because there is no reason why, uh, and this is an obstinate policy pursuit for 43 years on the par part of the Iranian regime. They don't need to be chummy chummy or very close with Israel, but they must recognize the fact that that is a country that exists and it has influence and it can do things. And it's to the interest of the Iranian nation for them to be able to have dialogue with them. But in this particular instance, and at this particular time, uh, reaching a diplomatic resolution indirectly can achieve the same aim. For example, in the negotiations that have been going on in Vienna, uh, the Iranian parties have not uh, spoken directly to the Americans, and which is, again, another folly for the you know, people of Iran whose lives have been sacrificed in this way. But the fact is that, that a solution can be reached that is satisfying for the Americans, even though they're not uh, they are negotiating directly. And the same principle obviously applies to Israel. So if there is a diplomatic arrangement arrived at in which the, there is a check on Iran's nuclear program, that is to the benefit of all of Iran's adversaries. And this is something that could, you know, uh, preempt having to talk about issues of striking one another and this sort of thing. Okay, we'll leave it there for now. Merdad Kansari joining us from London. Thank you.